this is just a quick showcase for my Shulkerbox merging array. So Shulkerbox merging is a concept developed by Palapala. What it is 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 where you take two shul partial shulker boxes and you merge the two together to try and create one whole. So let's just quickly demonstrate that with the slice here. So what I'm doing is I'm inputting the two boxes and I'm inputting them in a very specific order. I'm specifically inputting the um, black shulker box first because I want that to be um, sucked in first and placed um, by this bottom dispenser because we um, optimally want to always feed the least full shulker into the most full shulker because that greatly uh, reduces um, the amount of item transfer time. So let's just unfreeze and watch this work. This will be a very quick operation. So as you can see, it's getting fed into when it fills up, it breaks, and we get our shulker boxes. Perfect. So this over here is an actual array with the front end and everything done. So the way that the distribution works is just like how I showed there. Um, you send a packet of the two boxes along and through the water stream, which then constantly is trying to um, push it against these trapdoors. Whenever the trapdoors are closed, obviously the items can't enter, but when it's open, the items uh, can actually enter. Now, the reason why the creation of these um, two are important is because um, we need to actually send the items as one packet since um, these trapdoors can really open at any time and if they're separated that means potentially we could have one slice only getting one of the boxes uh, while the other gets the other and uh, if the if the pair separates uh, then everything breaks so that's not good. So let's just uh, look at some demo boxes. So these are some relatively short uh, transfer time um, uh, merging operations. So the, the most full boxes are over here and the least full are over here and uh, the, the similar colors are paired with similar colors. So let's just look at this. So the most full go over here, the least full over here. And you can see the alignment system. So the boxes get dispensed they align themselves against this fence gate and slime block and get uh, just shot into the uh, the array. <laughs> and it's going to go through these boxes pretty quickly since um, the actual number of items that um, that that gets transferred in each one is is very small. So as you can see, we're getting the correct boxes. Either we're getting a full box and a partial, or a full box uh, and an empty, or uh, or a partial box and an empty. So those are all valid merging um, outputs. So it's all looking good so far. I didn't put every edge case in there, but these are the, the vast majority of them. And I've tested every edge case I could think of. And uh, my good friend Optic Nerve, aka Masontic, also helped me with uh, with getting some, some edge case boxes as well. So this array, uh, at least the... <laughs> Um, at least from my testing, is, is, is very reliable. So I'm very happy with it. So you can just look at this. These are alike, these are alike, these are alike, which um, and I'm just quickly seeing if the, if the boxes are both the same, and if they are, that means it's nine, nine times out of ten a, a good merging operation. So yeah, they all seem to have worked, and you can, uh, you can double check me. These, uh, these will be in the world download, download as well. So if, uh, if I fucked up, just let me know. <laughs> But um, so yeah, that's that's general. That's in how it works in general. So we can run one more test, and uh, this test will actually saturate the array. And what this test is uh, aiming to do is um, is to to test out its um, overflow prevention system. So there's only so many uh, slices in the array, and so to prevent um, so there's a, there's a couple of ways to handle overflow. There's either um, not dealing with it at all and preventing any uh, ex any any boxes from skipping past the array altogether. So, if uh, if the array were to um, become completely saturated, then you shut off um, uh, the distribution. That's what this line is is here for. When all the torches are off, that means um, that means you know that the 
array is fully saturated. So then you don't show, send any boxes. The other way is just to simply let it uh, let it skip past if that happens and let it um, flow back and you try again. That is not so nice. Um, it makes the front end a lot more complicated, although it can be a little bit faster in high volume situations um, because then you can make the distribution faster. But the distribution in terms of the entire like merging scheme and all the pre-processing that you need to do to actually get to the point where you can merge boxes is a, is a drop in the bucket, really. So um, that's, that is actually one of the, the, the main downside with this uh, type of distribution with a water stream and the fact that I'm not, I don't want to deal with any overflow. Um, so the, the distribution is, is, is decently slow compared to, say, like a dropper line. Um, I believe it's about 80 game ticks, uh, and it gets a little bit slower as the array goes on, but um, as you fill up more slices in the array, you start to care less and less because the array is already almost saturated, you know. So again, let's just look at, uh, look at this. So I'm going to input nine shulker boxes um, uh, to be merged, uh, so 18 total. Um, so since this array only has eight, we should uh, see it actually stop. So it's, and it should distribute the last pair that's gonna be able to handle. And oopsie, yeah, the line shut off and it's holding these this last pair of shulker boxes here. So once this first um, pair of shulker boxes finishes, it should send the next one pretty quickly. Oh yeah, it already dispensed. So the um, that is one nice thing about the array. The initial distribution might be a little bit slower just because I wanted everything to be very simple. Um, but the actual reaction speed to when a slice opens up, uh, as you saw, um, was, was really quick. So overall, the, the actual uh, speed of the array is not really hindered by it. So we're just getting to the last few boxes. Actually, you know, I'll warp just to get through this. All right, there we go. So we should see nine empties and nine uh, nine boxes with uh, four stacks. So we have nine empties, perfect. Nine boxes, four stacks, awesome. Um, and without getting too much into the technical details of the array, that's and the and the wiring decisions overall. That's that's it in a nutshell. Um. Of course, there will be a world download provided, so you can you can really get your hands on it and play around with it. Um, so yeah, the uh, I've also color coded where the sections are, and I've also taken the time to um, add a block palette key over here. So um, this is just telling you what uh, each block uh, represents. So if it's like kind of like a neutral block, just something that um, a repeater just needs to be on. And doesn't need to do anything else. That's the that's where I've used this polish and a site. Um, but if it needs to be powerable um, and also redstone supporting, that's uh, that's where I've used these granite blocks. And you can look at the key and look through yourself. I didn't bother color coding like observers because if it's an observer, it needs to be an observer. So um, it's, it's just so if you want to change the palettes to um, as much as you can to your own to fit with the deck or whatever. It just makes it a little bit easier to do so. Um, so yeah, with that, I will leave you guys off. Again, World, on World Download will be in the description, and I hope you found this at least a little interesting. Bye-bye.